Today I'm on the island of Lismore, just north of Mull. Now, Lismore is a veritable hotbed of historical and archaeological treats. There's a handful of Bronze Age cairns, there's a couple of brocks, and even a scattering of 1st and 2nd century duns. It was also the site of a 6th century monastery, founded by the man who may have been Scotland's original patron saint. names in Celtic Christianity, sometimes called insular Christianity, are simply world famous. St Patrick, St Ninian, St Bridget, St Cuthbert and of course St Columba, just to name but a few. But one name that doesn't see the light of day very often may just be one of Scotland's best kept secrets and the dig behind me is excavating the walls of the 14th century cathedral that bore his name. In fact the chancel of that cathedral is still used as a parish church today. In 562, the year before Iona Abbey was founded, St Maluk came here to Lismore in order to found a base for his own ecclesiastical mission into Pictland. Time and time again in Argyll we come across the idea that these places were remote and difficult to get to. And I know I sound like a broken record when I say it, but you have to remember that these places were in the middle of the great seafaring kingdom Dauriata. Maluk didn't choose Lismore by accident either. The abundance of cairns on the island suggests that this was already an important religious site for kings. Choosing a site that already had mild to strong religious connotations was a common tactic in early Christianity and you see it a lot in early Christian sites. The idea was essentially that if people already had those ideas about a place, they found it much easier to convert. Now there's a wee bit of controversy about Moloch's next steps because it comes into direct conflict with some stories about Columba. Moloch reportedly headed into Pictland to seek sanction for his religious mission from the king at the time, King Brood. Now, Columba also made this mission, but the stories about Mulag suggest that Columba was actually only part of his group rather than heading it himself. Accounts that focus on Mulag suggest that King Bridge actually preferred him to Columba. Now, this is probably because Columba couldn't speak Pictish and he also had a lot of ties to Dalriath and royalty. Regardless of his role in that particular mission, Mulag did go on to found possibly up to 100 monasteries across Scotland before he died at Ross Markey on the Black Isle. Long after his death, his remains were reportedly transferred back to Lismore, and to this day, the Livingston chief of the clan Maclay is the keeper of his crozier, or the great staff of St Moloch. So how does all that add up to him being the original patron saint of Scotland? Well, Dalriata and Pictland eventually merged, so the importance of Moloch to both of these kingdoms probably came to the fore, which makes him a very likely candidate for our original patron saint. This has been Scotland's saga from the Isle of Lismore. If you want to catch up on all of our adventures in Argyll and Butte, or you just want to find out a little bit more about Scotland's history and heritage, don't forget you can click through to our channel below, watch the rest of our videos, and don't forget to subscribe.